Hello. No. Hello, Alfie. You're not in your normal room. Or if you are, mm. you're in a different bit of it. <laughs> no. No, no. I'm, um, that's why I wasn't sure, because I here at my friends in Devon. Ah. Um, getting ready for funeral. Oh, no. Um, yeah, one of my dearest friends died. Um, about, well, three weeks ago, and the funeral is next week, and we're trying to see, she's uh, an amazing artist, and we're trying to get the studio together for the wake. So, um, oh, we're tidying up, but in a very, like, leaving it like it was any, I don't even know what you, oh, it's quite, it's quite an intimate conversation with, with Sam <laughs> from the other side, you know, just to make it look lovely and and not remove her. Well, yeah. and not that we could. I don't think we could. Mm. You would love her. Now she's a master of meditative nature painting. Absolutely wow. Wow. incredible. You can look her up. Sam Pickard is her name. Sam Pickard. Okay, I will. Pickard. Yeah. Have I got anything here? Not her nature stuff. Hmm. She did, she's a textile design designer and artist. So she does graphic things. And uh, but her most astonishing work is <clears throat> uh, drawing. And you have to really do your kind of drawing in order to get that accurate so she could you know a piece of fern a, a fern leaf and she would draw that for weeks one leaf because it is so intricate and then print screen it, um, sc screen printed that way around anyway uh, how are you uh, i'm fine i'm a bit tired um uh, but otherwise i'm fine my son and partner have been here for two weeks oh and he's, he's been working and so um so i have to work every day really just to keep things going so it's uh i'm a bit exhausted i'm gonna try to have a little bit of a rest but we're going to london what, what like house work house repair yeah, work gar where garden is done a lot okay yeah yeah um the sort of thing that would take me a month was we've done in two weeks so I, it's uh, but it's, it's it's been great it's been very nice mm -hmm. except the weather's been terrible for uh for june we just had rain and it's been quite cold and so i'm very because i'm not used to this i'm in, normally in italy this time of year and uh, uh this is not pleasant but no, it isn't. <laughs> we had the like, heating on first day of oh, July wow. <laughs> yesterday. It, it was so cold in this house. <laughs> Just put the heating on. <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't resorted to that. I mean, because I can't believe <laughs> the guy heating on in the middle of the summer. But, uh, I know it is really against every bit of. <laughs> I mean, we're pretty exhausted too, working quite hard. <laughs> We couldn't stand it. Hello, Gary. Did I see Hello, you? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Hello. You can hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Can you? Yes, I can hear you. At least. And, uh... Okay. My, my signal isn't very good, I'm afraid. Yeah. I, I you understand, to... Gary. You know, it's, your signal isn't very good when you're in Indonesia which, on a boat, which you can sort of forgive. But... <laughs> You're in mm -hmm. Amsterdam, for God's sake. I mean, this is crazy. Well, yeah, but I, I'm a, in a one-star hotel, so. Uh... <laughs> well, skin flint, come on, upgrade. <laughs> no, 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 no. How many businesses? I, I don't like spending money. <laughs> you clearly don't. Huh. No. <laughs> this is the time, Gary. Go for it. <laughs> no. the time for what? <laughs> for getting good money. internet, whatever it costs. <laughs> well, well, yeah. 
I'm actually trying to connect to my, to my hand phone, but that doesn't seem to be working at the moment, but anyway. Mm. So what, what were you talking about before? I didn't really catch much of that. Oh, um, just kind of checking in where we are. Um, no philosophy yet, or maybe it is. Oh. It's maybe the one that counts. <laughs> Could be. Hmm. <laughs> hey, what did you think of the last session? I, I missed it, I'm afraid, so mm. I'm... I'm... Yeah, well, I, 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 uh, I was there um, and listened to it, and I've re-listened re to it. Um, you know, um, well, what could you say? I mean, I think he's taken it as far as he can. Uh, that's sort of my feeling. Um, and uh, I, I think some of his comments were, were, were very defensive um, in some ways. Um, he was you know, obviously addressing you know, orthodox Buddhist concerns. Um, who was that bhikkhu that sort of uh, um, threw some questions at him or, or some observations? Bhikkhu somebody, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, perfectly good points from a from a Buddhist framework, um, but I, I guess that's you know sort of the the trap you know, that that's where he is, and uh, I think I think he's going to be spending the rest of his days justifying himself <laughs> um, to, to, to Orthodox Buddhists. I think he's in that trap. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just sort of thinking, you know, he's he's probably taken. He can do it, and uh, uh, you know, which is you know, not not a bad start. Um, but you know, to take it further, I think it's probably going to need more than than um, Stephen and Body College. And uh, you know, if you really wanted to, to develop something, you know, or you know, contribute to some disc, some broader discourse, then you know, it needs to break out of that. Um, the confinement of, of that those Buddhist frameworks and discourses, but you know that that's always been the problem, <laughs> right up to, to the last. Um, and you know that, that I, I guess you know that that's the main thing that that's often talked about in in those lectures is is not so much you know Dharma, although you know it's plenty of that too, uh, but but justifying it against the, the template. Given by or the templates given by by historical Buddhism, um, so so he's still there, you know, and, it, and like given his audience, it, it was probably you know, justified. But um, yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, how, how do you take this further without sort of um, um, you know involving Buddhist institutions, and uh, you know, is, is that even possible or desirable? Or, you know. Is it just too hard? Yeah, I, I, as I say, I wasn't there, but I, I guess, I guess you're right. Um, I think, in fact, you are. I'm sure you're right. But um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible to. I mean, I was quite surprised overall about the course that it was directed so much at justifying, as you say, the. His position, um, but given the audience, that that's as you say again, it's not, it's not not surprising in retrospect. But it didn't seem to take it anywhere really. It, it, for me, it sort of went backwards because he he, he sort of mm. created another Buddhist framework with his thirty-two dimensions. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just like an alternative Buddhism. I mean, it, it wasn't. It wasn't after Buddhism. It was another more Buddhism. Buddhism. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're going to call the new, yeah, new Buddhism. It's like new labor, you know. It's like yeah. It's a, well, you know, I, I'm not sure that I, I think what he was trying to do was, you know, whether he wanted to admit it or not, is to define the Dharma, and you know, probably he, he probably confronted the yeah. fact that yeah. well. 
that the Dharma is not all, you know, it's not the same for everybody actually, but there are all these elements that, you know, people put together for themselves, um, you know, taking elements from that, you know, 32, whatever it might be. Um, and so, you know, to sort of define Dharma as one thing is, is you know, obviously incorrect. It's sort of a, you know, a constellation of things, which, you know, which people sort of take, you know, from them, take elements from, um, you know, in, in greater or lesser quantities. I think that's sort of, the, I think that's the, the basis of its framework is the fact that it's not it, that, you know, there are all these Dharma elements, uh, but not everybody does them, not everybody sort of, um, you know, acknowledges them perhaps, or, or perhaps some are used more than others, or perhaps some are, are emphasized, some others are, you know, not so emphasized. I think that was, you know, my reading of, of how he's trying to present it was that, you know, you know it's, uh, th there are all these elements that constitute, that could constitute you know, a dharma. Um, so that, that, that's my feeling. So the 32 elements, or whatever we call them, um, it doesn't really matter what they are or how many there are, frankly. Um, the, the, the principle is that there's a lot of things and uh, there's, there's just not one thing. And, uh, and combinations of these things can sort of have a, you know, can affect the character of, of a particular person's um, uh, understanding and, and um, execution of Dharma. Yeah, no, I, I think, again, that seems right. Mm. I, I just don't think it's particularly useful. Yeah, um, well, certainly not for me either. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's it's going back to the course we were on, where the tasks, or I still think LP skills is better. That is such mm -hmm. a a good and useful model. That's sort of helpful. I mean, that you, you can mm -hmm. see how that works, and you can see it in your daily life and you can and it makes a difference and i can't see any of this stuff making a difference mm -hmm. um you know it, it it sort of yes okay these are virtues and the virtues are useful things and try and cultivate them okay thanks very much uh and how do i do it i mean and in what way do they relate to um, things I do daily that are that's different from anything that has been, mm. you know, any sort of platitude you could say generally. I think the problem for me is mm. that it's, that it's not, because I, when I was on the course, I read it in conjunction <laughs> with science, you know, the sort of evolutionary psychology. Mm. And that it just made lots of sense because you can see the science behind mm. you can see how it works you can see the yes these are great ideas because they relate to the way the world is the way we are the way our bodies are the way our minds are so that mm. it, it coalesced into a, a, a sensible and reasonable thing it made it worked it made mm. sense in the world Whereas this is, is sort of, I don't know, it's a bit like literature. It's a sort of like, it's, it's, here are some, here are some words um, and make of them what you will, but they're not, they don't seem to be, for me, I'm struggling to find how they relate to things I can do, to things I can act on, to the process of living other than at one remove. You know, you take this idea, this virtue, and apply it in this situation, if it's appropriate. Well, well, well I've got quite a, um, a rant about that, but uh, I'd like to hear Elfie <laughs> first, Elfie <laughs> first about uh, what, what, she, what she thinks. I thought in this last session, he kind of, the most exciting or, you know, was the, the, the one, the, la the before, one but last, 
I don't know. Uh, you know, the, the one that Rupert heard as well then, I think, mm -hmm. because in this in this last one now, I think he kind of um, hankered down again. And there was a lot of, and I think it's also uh, um, uh, defensive, de defending his old thing. And in a weird way, this defending, as defensive as it is, is his comfort zone. He knows his stuff there. He knows how to argue and to quote the right suitors and stuff. So it is his comfort zone. And then he has just been after making an ethics out of it. And there comes the problem because he's so convinced that it has to be an ethics rather than just like, you know, because the, the full tasks or skills for me are not an ethics. There is how to be in the world, meaning this, it's, a, it's a method, not an ethics. And it's the old, mm -hmm. for me, from what I have read, you know, that was the struggle of Heidegger in his time because the most uh, prevalent um, uh, philosophy of the time was neo-Kantism. And what they said is exactly this ethics stuff. They said, you know, everyone, like Kant, everyone um, has rationality. And um, if you just follow that, then everyone comes to the same very good decisions. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's an ethics. So you, you follow these, these um, uh, virtues like like he and 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 then you can make any old list of virtues can't you i mean that's depending on your style perhaps and um and mm -hmm. so i think people will um there will be a, a a strong divide within people who are drawn to ethics i mean in our group there are some people who just say the brahma viharas are it you know so when i have those in my mind then that inspires me and I am a better person for it, you know? So they, they need these kind of loving kindness, uh, equanimity, th those virtues, and they, they feel that they are guided by it. And then there's Heidegger who says, forget it, because most of it happens without you even being conscious of it. So, you know, you have to do it another way. You have to understand first how this being works and how it's in the world. And then you have half a chance to mistrust mm -hmm. yourself in the, in the adequate manner. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so it goes mm -hmm. together really well, I feel, the skills and tasks with knowing what as human beings we are like in the world. And we might have very good ethical ideas and it's completely meaningless because in the event, if I'm not skillful, I will just park my ethics and do whatever I like, I think, which is what most people do. <laughs> and and or, now I do often enough, mostly. And um, and I feel that he's 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 so married to the ethics that he even sacrifices the tasks almost. You know, it's it's, and that's a shame for me. I'm I'm drawn to the other, but the people on my on my study group, the on, in the big in the in not on the study the the, <laughs> the drop in the the or the drop out breakout. sessions, breakout sessions, they were totally impressed. They loved it. Loved it. Uh, they didn't like it when when Socrates came in. Oh, they, uh, no, they they liked it best when. Uh, Stephen was saying his old stuff, basically. And they, um, so um, I, I just note that probably me and, and you lot uh, are not in the majority there. I think you're right. <laughs> I think it okay. just okay. doesn't is it, is it take time for a rant. Hmm? Is it time for a rant? <laughs> yes, go on. <laughs> Top me. <laughs> I had a good one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll try and keep this as, as short as possible. So, you know, you'll have to excuse some of the shortcuts. <laughs> um, okay.
pretty much that. Dharma is basically bullshit. So just this is put that aside for the moment. Um, this week I, it was actually quite interesting, um, and I'll, I may or may not get into that. I met with. Um, I happened to come into a, a, a Zoom meeting with people from uh, Sumatra in, in Indonesia. Um, now, I don't know what I've done a, a few times. It's, it's like, like a, a meditative practice that uh, originated in, in Java and uh, was a, particularly strong before the Second World War and during the, the, uh, the war period. Um, it's basically a, a, a type of meditative practice. And, and, and they really have no concept of, of Dharma, which is surprising given that Dharma is a, a very, very familiar concept and word that's used in, in Java. Um, and and the, the basic, unfortunately, I, I could not, I actually asked for the recording of, of the um, uh, with artists. There was an artist, there was uh, this woman from, um, from Italy, who's sort of, I've known for you know, decades um, and who's you know, heavily involved with, with uh, running Sumata type sessions. Um, and you know, the, their approach is that, you know, if you're, if you're already in a non-reactive state, you know, what we might call Dharma, that thing emerges as a consequence of being in that non-reactive state. So whatever that, whatever emerges from that state is, is that would consider that dharma. So they don't really have a concept of ethics. They have no concept of dharma, uh, but they do have a very, very strong um, uh, concept of uh, non-reactivity. Mm. Um, so th th this whole thing about ethics, dharma, and you know, what do I do after I'm non-reactive? Um, well, they consider that to be obviously emergent from that state. That you know, people who are in a, you know, a non-reactive, calm state, you know, make sort of choices, and, and uh, I guess what we could call dynamic. They, you know, that they are they are considered from from a, from from a, from a standpoint of, of uh, a non it's a non-reactive response. So that non-reactive response, they would consider to be dumb. So they don't mm. define it at all. They, they would open that. They, they just say it's that open space. Uh, that, that your, your responses are emergent from that, uh, from that position of non-reactivity. Mm. So I, I guess we can all finish up there now. We're, you know, Dharma's all done. Uh, so, you know, th this is sort of you know, a completely backwards approach. To, to you know perhaps what a Buddhist approach would be, basically putting the um, you know what are they trying to do? Are they putting the, the, the horse after the cart or before the cart? I don't, I don't know. Um, but you know they sort of have you know the, the the first three tasks are basically you know to do with you know, um, recognizing uh, reactivity. And and, uh, and and quelling it, uh, and and out of that comes action, um, and and that, that being you know, the, the the fourth. Uh, but uh, you know, that that's to me is just it just means that you know dharma is emergent. It's just it, it's not just sort of a you know a four step plan. Um, you know, dharma, the, the the thought that you know dharma is is something that that is an emergent thing. And well, not just emergent, but but something that can be studied, something that can be learned from. So that the whole process of wisdom is a process of continual learning uh, uh, from these, you know, um, from from situations and and, and and whatnot. So, and that's probably one aspect that's probably not really integrated very well into into Stephen's model, which is you know that we learn. Uh, that, that wisdom is learned, that from these non-reactive states we, we respond and then we, we learn from the responses. 
always study and always say, you know, I need to know more about this, or I need to know more about that, or what, you know, the, the, the sort of uh, impetus to actually study and, and say, you know, I need to, and just not, not just from, you know, formal study, but, but from situations and, and, and you know, and from, what, from whatever, from whatever. So, I don't know, I mean, that, that's just one aspect that, that I've been thinking about that probably has, hasn't been emphasized and that perhaps the order of things is, is a bit wrong. You're starting from a, I mean, the, the starting point is always, you know, being in a, in a non-reactive space, in a calm non-reactive space. Um, so that, that seems to be the, the fundamental thing that's in common with uh, um, many um, uh, practices that, that I might refer to as, as dynamic. What do you think about all that? Wasn't very coherent. I wish you could hear the uh, the uh, um, the video, but when I asked to get the recording, uh, it caused an, a, quite a bit of panic. Um, <laughs> some of the things that they said. Oh, uh, you know, can get them in a lot of trouble. Mm. Um, and so I think they. Completely, even though it was a, this this seminar was actually sponsored by some ASEAN uh, NGO, so somehow they they managed to wangle a you know a spot there. It was actually to do with with art, and this this Indonesian artist was talking about her art. It was actually quite interesting the whole thing, uh, but it was all in the context of Samara. It wasn't about art; it was about the Samara in the art or, or how the art was an expression. Uh, uh, you know, an outward expression of that um, uh, um, practice. Oh, well, well yeah, besides not being able to get the recording, of course, it was all in Indonesian, but, but yeah, it would have been nice to, to, have, to have had it. <laughs> yeah, that would have, been, would have been a great deal of use then. <laughs> Oh, just by the yes. way. <laughs> well, I could have translated it. And, and I think, you know, the, the well, way that did. was way, way better than I expressed it. Um, mm. But um, it, it would have been really useful. But yeah, I've caused a bit of panic in their circle just by doing that. Because I actually requested it while we're online and uh, got absolutely no response, even though they'd asked, uh, answered my questions previously. Because um, I actually asked them, you know, what is the role of uh, dharma or ethics in Samara? And uh, they basically, uh, like, the, the basic response was, it's not something we think about. <laughs> it's it's uh, that, you know, it was quite obvious that, you know, these things are emergent. These things come out of the practice. They, they, you know, the dharma is not the practice, it's what comes out of the practice, which is, and the practice being, you know, um, um, uh, yeah, non reactivity very basic I, I think it sounds very I it sounds makes a lot of sense and, and training to sort of uh, and it's it's yeah. also mm -hmm. seems to me it's what Elfie was saying because it means that if you're mm, yes. focusing as Stephen is now on ethics rather than the tasks then it, it, he's sort of gone off he's taken the wrong track it, it's he should be I think so tasks yeah, I, th I mean, the tasks are what from which it always it always seemed to me that that was the case. That, it, that is the starting point for your ethical response, because that's the place that you get to, which allows you to have an ethical response because you're no longer acting react reactively. If you act mm -hmm. reactively, then you're acting without thought, without consideration, without you're you're acting subjectively. You're acting from an emotion. You're not being dispassionate, and you can only be dispassionate if you're non-reactive. If you can distance yourself from the emotion, if you can do that, then you can stand apart and you can think what's the skillful what's the wise thing to do as much as you are skillful or you are wise and as you say you could then reflect on that and think well I wasn't 
skillful enough so i will try and be more skillful i will learn of the the skills i will try and gain more wisdom and, well, and that, that is, would be, that is a that, very important point i mean the, the fact that you know i must learn or i must develop skills or i'm i'm not very skilled at, at handling this situation you know, even yeah. from a from a standpoint of non-reactivity absolutely you know, yeah you, no, no non-reactivity is only is, is, is a, as you say, it's a, it's a position, it's an objective position, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can you can do the right thing, you can do the skillful, not right, the skillful or the wise thing, but at least it puts you in a position where you recognize there is a wise thing that could be done. Um, what do, what do you, what do you think? And I mean, the only ethic, the only virtue to me and I have to you know, thought about it, so convince me otherwise, but that I could find that was worth having apart from the tasks, because the tasks come with equanimity for me, you know, that's the only way to it, actually. I can't have the virtue of equanimity. Oh, I shouldn't care. Well, I care even more, of course, you know, uh, or I shouldn't be upset or so. That doesn't work, does it? So the only mm. way, um, so that a lot of the things get, they are no good anyway as virtues for me, other than being listed in, you know, what we have observed good people to do, perhaps. But um, as a as a as a as a, a flourishing life manual, they are not very useful in the way do this, do that. Um, but the one that I'm I can't get rid of is kindness. You know, the, it's like the the wisdom is done by the tasks, but you could do the tasks without kindness, um, and and that's. So I can't, and, and that wouldn't be, that wouldn't feel good to me. And that doesn't work for me in my life. I know, so I can't get rid of one virtue, which is kindness. Or do you feel that that's in the task anyhow? Well, I think it's inherent. I, I would hope that it was inherent. I mean, if you're, in the task. If you're responding... If you're, if you're responding from, from, from a basis of compassion, then you know, kindness would certainly have to be amongst that. Yeah, but uh, I, okay. On the other hand, I mean, but then you have to say, well, you know, sometimes being kind means not being very nice. Uh, or, or else, you know, sometimes you need to sort of scope, you know, your, your kindness. You may not be kind to to certain people but you might be kind to a group even yeah that people, that is a given that you may not, yeah it, it, kindness is sometimes kind. pretty rough yeah but it still comes from a kind orientation Can't. yes <coughs> I, I, yeah, I i i agree yeah yes i i, I think i agree both with the <laughs> This is really strange. I agree with both of you, and uh, uh, sort that out. Both, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's both inherent and it's kind. Oh, oh. Do you, do you? I suppose the thing is, can you cultivate kindness? Um, if it's a virtue to be cultivated, uh, if it's if it, it's either there or it isn't. I mean, you're you. It's a bit like the compassion thing. It's a sort of well, you should act. But it can be learned. I think uh, it can be learned. Yeah. What, uh, yeah, I t I'm absolutely well, well, yes, sure it can be learned. Kindness for some people. Well, and I, I'm well. I'm not naturally yeah, a well, kind we, person. We, but you know, you got to learn to do those things when you're a child. Yeah. You know, th th that's part of your basic dharmic education. Is, you know, being nice to other kids is a good thing to do. Yeah. It's highly adaptive. Yeah. So. <laughs> I agree. It starts early, <laughs> yeah. or not. <laughs> but, you know, but can you learn to be kind? Can you? I don't know. I think, I think you can learn to be kinder. I mean, I mean, yeah. sort of, you know, if, if it wasn't sort of post childhood. I think I could. Say, well, I could say. I mean, because could... it's all these these skills. Sorry. What I was going to say is, I think you can learn to uncover kindness. I'm not sure that you can learn to become I'm quite 
prepared to be convinced. But I, what I would say is that I think it was what Gary said that, that it's inherent that 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 is our our default state is to be kind. Um, once we have once we have grown to about five six years old, that that's the position we are. We can we can become unkind we can certainly learn to be unkind not well learned but yeah we can learn to be unkind but if i'm not sure i'm not sure that we can learn to be kind I, it seems to me that that is our default position so we're, we're kind people we are as a species now we can become unkind easily that's not a problem uh, but can we can become could you become kinder? I claim that for myself. I has, right. I think I've become kinder. Can you become more kind now from where you are now? I want to be oh, kind. absolutely. I got way more to go. <laughs> <laughs> that is a scale what? on this scale. But when you reach the, that end of that scale, is that, I suppose that would be when you got to the kind right at the top. When you're full yeah, of like, kind of uh, 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 hitting yeah, the yeah. hitting the when needle there. <laughs> yeah, when it's there, right? Yeah. When the need when when you're full of kindness. <laughs> I suppose what I'm saying is that, that that's actually the default. That's where you started. All of the other bits of the oh, nature boy. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I just thought of No, think no, I I, I it's take a sort it. Of, because otherwise, how could you? And that's the sort of thing you could because other the other things you'd be doing to be more kind are i don't know what are they they are they they are not absolutes that's the thing i think they are uh, relative i can or oh, i can do a bit more of this i mean if you take the position of the skeptics and the and um epicurean position of the way to live is by not having possession and it, and it's also i think uh, Rousseau's position of that we start off from a position of 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 being kind and and compassionate be beings but because of society we have learned the value of possession and that has created all our problems so if so that's yeah i'm not gonna say anymore i think i because I, I need to think about it a bit more but I, I i think that's where my my position is nature boy i'll just remember that okay no i think not, it I, it got a it's got absolute value and and as you say russo you, you you know you, you there's there's great thinkers that have thought that way that we kind of you know, we get damaged rather than um, we have something to learn. Hmm. Yeah, that is that is a well. It, it, our society is a bit weird, isn't it? We, I mean, all civilizations, all our societies are not how they're not evolutionary. They're not part of what we are as animals. They're what. Have we have added to our culture is what we've added on. We, it's not there as part of us. We've grown into it. I mean, schooling, for goodness sake, schooling is like, it's just such a weird thing. Is it, It's a sort of, we've decided that these things are useful for you to learn and to know. But they're not, they don't emerge from us. They emerge from culture. So they're added onto us. Mm. And uh, for me, a lot of the, I mean, I, I just I felt damaged by schooling, and I I feel that it's a it, you know I, because for me I think for for people for whom schooling is a joy, I think you don't see it that way, but because I was dyslexic before dyslexia was invented. Nobody, I was just stupid. So I, up until then, I wasn't. Up until then, I was fine. But schooling, education, 
created parameters for me which I just thought were weird and and stopped the things that I was doing before. So I that's how that's why I have this prejudice against it, and I can recognize that the. That I was, it was imposed on me, and as I went through life, more things were imposed on me, and I lost bits of what I was, what my world was previously. The freedom of the world was constrained by education and culture, uh, the, the norms of our culture. But there were but probably a, pretty much any other culture would have been the same. Education and our culture is, is just is a, an acculturalization, you know, it's an initiation into the culture. Um, yeah, and culture for us. And in, order to, in order to do that, you've got to get rid of, suppress the things that, that you would have been otherwise. So mm -hmm. you would have been yeah. flourishing like this, but as you go into culture, it comes like this and you become. So all these bits, of, these mm -hmm. bits are gone. And these, interestingly enough, is the same symbol I use for the fullness of, of kindness that you're seeing on it, just on this side. So that's mm -hmm. the full. You were full of. We were full of kindness, but we've been constrained. So we could go back to being mm -hmm. full. But that's the fullness. Well, well what what constrains kindness? The things that constrain kindness are things like you know um, hatred and greed. You know. Um, Th these are the things which which stand in the way of kindness in, in a lot of cases. And, um, yeah, and greed uh, is central to our culture. Ownership mm -hmm. and wealth mm -hmm. are greed, aren't they? Or attachment. Well, I mean, the fact that you you want something, you know, that that means I'm greedy. I want to, I want this. I want that. I'm. I have this. I have that. Those things are all greed. I mean, they, I, that's if I don't have anything, I'm not. Well, I can't be greedy. Don't go quite that far. Well, I would. <laughs> I mean, having an attachment. I've got to disagree you about have something. An attachment to actually, yeah, I've got to. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I think it's attachment in general. I mean, a greed is basically an attachment to to wealth, you know, or, or you know, you can have an attachment to to social status. Or an attachment to you know whatever whatever or persons or groups or ideas these are all attachment and these yeah. Yeah. i guess are, are all it isn't for what we, when we wish to be nice to, to people um, yeah you know, the, these are the things that constrain our niceness if that's possible i think I think exactly that. I think that they constrain our niceness. I think just for instance, if mm. schooling, for instance, let's go back. First, the first time you were in school, I don't know what your schooling was like, but for me, the, the first things that you do, you get into a, a hierarchy in school, a, in your ability. So you are, in our school, it was very uh, precise in that we were positioned to do with ability in the classroom. So the, the greater your level of ability, the closer you were to the front of the class and the least, less ability were further away. I mean, it's not often done that way anymore, I don't think, but it was, it's quite a good example of how physically you can see where your position is in the hierarchy. Now, that hierarchy didn't exist for, prior to school, so that the hierarchy is imposed by society. And that hierarchy kills a level of kindness because you're no longer the same. We're no longer all the same. We have now, there are some people, oh, I aspire to be more like that. I, I'm going to have to get cleverer. I'm going to have to do more in order to, to become, climb up or climb forward in this case. Um, otherwise, I can be. You know, I'm better than the people behind me, but I'm not as good as the people in front of me. And immediately you have any form of, of uh, hierarchy, any form of testing, any form of placement, you are creating something which 
doesn't is not certainly doesn't exist explicitly um, prior to that. When you're playing, then the decisions that you make about playing and who you're playing with and how you play are not constrained by a direct hierarchy. They are much more fluid, much more skillful, really, because they take into account all of the things that all of the characteristics of the person you're playing with. When you're playing, you think, well, that he's not, she's not doing what I want them to do at this particular point. But on the other hand, they've got all these other qualities which are really interesting and blah, blah, blah. So you, you have, you develop playful friendships, um, but you don't hierarchy. You don't say that's a better friend than that. You don't do that. You just work with the, the world because the friends aren't really much different from the rest of the world that you are growing up in. But they become different when they are identified as individuals who have who have aspects to them which are different from you. I think that um, that that I follow that and and um, yeah that feels that feels convincing to me. At the same time, it's. Um, I think you come from, one can come from it from science and evolutionary science and, and understanding um, uh, um, psych evolutionary psychology, or one can come from, um, from philosophical things like Heidegger. But when you're in a Cartesian worldview, like I spent my most of my life, and uh, most people are, uh, you know, we are in it. Just like you say, these cultures that we we mostly don't question, we are even more fundamentally in a Cartesian worldview, where I'm a thinking thing, and when you are in when when I think when people are in that worldview, then. You either have to be a very, you know, you have to study the, the, the science like that, you know, what it is to be a brain, or how to be. You can get there from science, but, but, and, and all, all from Heidegger. But normally you're in a Cartesian worldview that's a thinking thing and it needs ethics, it needs guidelines, it needs virtues, it need, because that's the, you, you think mostly, not are in the world, you know, that's the, that's the science Heidegger thing, you are in the world, just, I mean, it's interesting for me how often you refer to that being in the world, because you, you really get it, and uh, I, I agree with it so much, and I think that is, that is just a real turn, turn on its head of understanding of, of how one functions in one's world, and it, it, it is, I, I cannot see how someone who is, or I, I can see how someone is in the Cartesian worldview cannot rely on just the tasks and skills enough. They, the, the, the inclination will always be to have the ethics necessary because I got to think about something and I trust that more the kind of thinking and the, the kind of words and, and virtues and, and rationality. Um, I, I, I believe more in that than I, than I trust just being in the world skillfully. I can, that, because that's more like a, a feel, like a, a doing, like a, you know, I have to give up a lot of ego. Uh, and, and that is just for most people I, I know it was for me impossible to get there until I was introduced into this other world view. Well, that's part of the learning process, which yes, is I, I think. 
No, we carry on. Uh, uh, um, what you're mentioning you know, seems part of a, a learning process, which is you know, probably not explicitly accommodated within the frameworks that uh, that, that Stephen has developed. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm, I've, all, I've also started to think that maybe, maybe there's five tasks. Maybe after you act, you learn. Um, you know, because um, learning seems to be pretty a pretty fundamental thing. I mean, it mean Dharma may well be emergent, but it may also teach you that you, know, you have a lack of skills in some areas, for example. You don't know certain things. You don't know how to handle such, certain situations. Or um, you know, so that that actual learning part of the it, you know it really seems to be missing from from that. Uh, from that model, um, so you know, I mean, so you know, after you, you know, you know, em embrace dukkha, um, uh, let go, uh, seeing that, you know, um, letting the cessation of of, uh, of reactivity, and then acting, well, then you know, have you learned anything? Um, and, and does you know does that feed back into your into your you know worldview and and uh, and way of behaving? So you know I can't see that you can have you know, a, a good functioning dharma without actually having learning embedded into that actual process. Uh, isn't that implied in the four tasks as well, in the first three tasks, which is I, what I'm mostly ta uh, talking about always? Because I found that mm -hmm. my learning is mostly impeded by being reactive. You know, when I get judgmental, mostly about myself, mm -hmm. that's when my learning gets impeded because I should already have known or, you know, I, I, there's the, this openness and... and um, abandoned of learning is part of being in nirvana in a way you know of non-judgmental say oh look that's fascinating or something so i know that my personal learning is mostly impeded by self-judgment and and um and so that's reactivity so it's is self judgment all that bad though? I mean, isn't self judgment part of a, of a learning process? I mean, if you sort of react or misreacted or, or were reactive in some way, uh, which you later say, you know, I, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have said that or whatever. I mean, being able to sort of non react, if you look at that situation, you know, that wasn't the right way to handle that. You know, I wish I could have handled that better. You know that that is part of the learning process, also. Even when you, you know, obviously, it's you know looking back at a reactive situation from a non-reactive view, viewpoint, but you know that, that in itself, you know, is is part of that learning. Process, is examining those moments when when you were reactive and saying, you know, could I have done this better, or you know, or you know, do I need more skills in this particular area? Do I need to learn how to meditate, for example, so I can talk, <laughs> so I'm not so easily reactive, you know? Um, you know, because meditation is really just one of those tools in that learning box. Um, it's just one of the skills. Um, and so, you know, that learning part is where the skills are located and they're starting to feel. I guess I will be very specific. Assessment, yes. Judgment, no. The way from how it, I, I uh, observe it in me and perhaps in others too, is that if I look and say assessment wise, would be good to have more skills in a situation like this, my dear, <laughs> to myself. <laughs> how about it? Um, um, uh, that that orients me, that's non-reactive non and orients me towards 
some some learning. If I say I wish I hadn't done that, that's terrible. Look how um, how badly I handled that. I notice how I don't want to engage with it anymore. It turns me away from the whole. I just want to go oh. So as soon as judgment comes in, I notice how I how I just try to run. You know, I just I turn away from it rather than towards it, and I. I done that a lot in my life and it's been it's it's um i uh it's 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 what it is i i hope that i i get better and better at not doing that so assessing yes totally you know uh i really need more skills here um and um hopefully it's it's got me a, a bit further on but as soon as judgment comes in most people just turn away from it and don't want to handle it anymore they just go you know oh it's it gets so painful so quickly and that's a reactive state and no learning can take place well, not for me harsh judgment, well, judgment i guess is reactive. yeah a, a judgment is a reactive thing I think. yeah but you know yeah. if, if you're sort of looking at sort of some something you might have said or done uh, from a non-reactive standpoint, I mean, you, you should not be judgmental. You should be saying, hmm. "What could be done? What could exactly. I exactly? Do what could I? What can I do right. better here? You know? Yeah. That 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 going towards something rather than uh, being harsh on a on a former self, which would be both mm -hmm. inauthentic and not useful. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with all of that. The only thing I would say wow. is about <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. The only Wanna thing I'd roll. say is Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've got to disagree about something and I'm gonna disagree about the learning bit. Because I just I think okay. it's it's unlearning. It's not learning. Mm. Yeah. Well oh. unlearning is learning. It's the same thing. Uh, well, it isn't. Well, uh, I'm learning. learning. It's a it's a it's subgroup. A the same thing. <laughs> it's it's unlearning. It's it's the, it's a things. subset of learning. Ah, but that's it. now Heidegger would say that's very important though because we have to we have to start within the framework. Otherwise, the world is not understandable to us. So, in a way, we have to learn the ways of our culture and society before we can take a stand towards it. If we would, from the beginning, not be introduced into it, it would be kind of just like landing in Papua New Guinea, not knowing how the ways are, and we would be totally perplexed and couldn't take a stand on it because I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's, I don't think it's quite like that. Because <laughs> we are, we are, we are what we are. We are, we have the skills already. This is my position. That we already have them. Uh, there's a there's a little boy at the you know, our next door neighbour at the end of our garden, who's four years old, who's called Ezra, and Ezra has not yet learnt the culture. He is, he is a human being and acting as a human being without the learning of culture as yet. And, and he's a delight and, and he is what I think we all are until we gain the learning of culture. And he will learn the culture and he will become less delightful because of that over time. But he'll know more, he'll be richer, he will have a, he will be, wealthy um but he will not be as delightful as he is at the moment and that's just mm. that's what happens mm. but i think but but his essence will not change his his what he is is still there but it will be overlaid mm. by the culture that's i think that's my my point because what else happens to his delightfulness. Yeah, there will, and 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 you, there's 
but it's not completely that he is not cultured. He already knows that we sit on oh, chairs yes. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, people stare into little black uh, things all day long and tap and, and all that. Oh, no, so absolutely. he will have learned a lot about our culture that is not impeding massively on his nature yet, but he will know how it functions all right, how to go to a shop, um, how to drive in cars and stuff like, you know, multitudes I, of stuff. Yeah, that's why I thought yeah. when you said the you know, landing in Papua New Guinea wasn't appropriate, because I, I don't think that is the guy. I think he does, you're right, he, he will, he can survive and he understands the culture, but he hasn't yet learned the, the civilizing rules that he <laughs> will learn. And, uh, has he hit you over the head with a stick? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, not yet. I mean, I, it's 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 a it's a what well, I'm talking about really is his, his character, mm. I, I suppose. The essence yeah. Of it. And it is that which, and I think, probably all, pretty much all children have mm. that essence. But it it is at stages because of the way that our society, the way all societies pretty much are, not necessarily all, but most of them, produce constraining elements. And it is, and it is so what all I'm really saying is that the, the learning the, that we're talking about is really unlearning. It's, it's, as we learn to be nicer, learn to be more compassionate whereas in fact it it's all you don't learn it from a book you you learn it's there already i'm pretty i think <laughs> i think well, well it can certainly there. be there I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's already there but sometimes you need well, actual skills to, to sort of uh, or, or sort of ideas to sort of bring it out or to illustrate it for you which is where, you know, learnings of, of various types or unlearnings, you know, can be, can be useful. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yes. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure how wedded I am to this um, mm. because I'm not convinced that I'm right. Cool. Well, I, I have to say throughout the course, I have the, the best learning and conversations with you two. So, <laughs> and, yeah, and I'm amazing. grateful to the course that it made us, you know, keep on meeting and, and having there. Cause that's, I find that most enriching and it's, it's just lovely. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you record them, Gary. Cause I'm, I will go back and have a look at things. Cause I forget some of the things that have yeah. been said, which I think are really interesting. I'm, I'm going to, um, I don't, did I, did I, you probably saw on the forum thing, I, I have proposed um, that I will run a, um, well, I don't really want to run it, but I, I will try and organize a, a, another session based around creativity and imagination. And I've got the word Dharma in as well, but I mean, that's, mm -hmm. and I'm going to start that um, if it works. It's about, including me, there's about eight people who've, who've signed up, which is, which is about right, I guess, because it'll probably narrow down to um, maybe half that, I, 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 I would think. But it'll be interesting because just to see how that works, um, to see if they're, if what we've been talking about is similar there. I think if it's a sort of Buddhist approach, then I'm, I think I might just give up quite early on. But if it's more about the the wider appreciation of ideas, philosophies, science, how those things interact, but focusing on the on the the creative aspects of what we are, what that what creativity means, and what imagination means, I, I'll be I think it'll be quite. Uh, interesting quite fascinating at least one of them is a, an artist is a, a painter so but it might well be that the others are, are as well because because of the, that's why they wanted to be 
because I thought thought it would be interesting. So I'll 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 see if they're happy to have that recorded. I hadn't thought about that, but um, because if they are, that that might be something else we could share. Things that, things that might occur in there might be something mm. that will relate to us. But obviously, you could come along and join. And but um, the fact that you haven't signed up, I presume, is the, means you have. And there are commitments in your lives which are already constraining, which I think is quite reasonable. And I think that might well be on me as well, but I've said I'll do it, so I will. Yes. Well, yeah, commit commitments are a sort of a thing. Mm. Um, <laughs> they are a bit of a thing. Um, my, my company was uh, attacked by um, um, hackers uh, last Sunday. Um, oh all our servers were brought down and destroyed, all the data. What? Including all the backups. No. Uh, so I've now got, um, uh, you know, well, it's not just my employees, of course, but there's huge numbers of clients, including accountants in you know, escrow cut clients and things like that, for which we have no records. We might be able to piece it together, but we might not. Um, but yeah, so all my websites are down, oh possibly gone forever. Um, God. But, but the, yeah, I guess that, that's part of what happens when you sort of rely on, when, when, you, when you're trying to sort of build up uh, Indonesians to sort of take over. Sometimes they get it wrong, including things which I told them about backups they never did. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I, I'm sort of on a, on a preposis here. That, uh, and, and adding to that is the situation in Indonesia at the moment uh, that the COVID is just rampant. It's just completely out of control now. So, you know, it's um, going to be interesting to see what, whether we can sort of get it back because if we can't, then we're more than dead. It's going to be, um, well, yes. But yeah, I, I'm just sort of, you yeah, know, working through that. Um, Obviously, my people in Jakarta are, are as well, but I, I, I've got my doubts that they'll be able to res, uh, resurrect everything. Um, but who knows? I'm not really interested in helping them anymore. I'm just going to let, let them sink or swim. And that's a funny thing, though. I really don't feel that, you know, this should be devastating. And it, it is devastating. You know, it, uh, you know it, it, uh, I mean, I should be upset. Um, but um, I think I should be more than upset. I, th I think, you know, thinking, you know, how should I be reacting? Like, why aren't I reacting like that? And it could be that, well, you know, if it's gone, it's gone. And okay, I'll move on now. You know, if, if my identity has been stolen, maybe that's a good thing. I'll get a new one. So, you know, um, mm. so mm. yeah, responses. I just have to sort of see over the next uh, couple of weeks whether that, whether that response or um, stays or not but uh yeah so at this point i'm really not sure which way i'm going to be going whether i'm going to be stranded in in europe uh you know or, or you know going back to a, a complete utter mess and and added to that is uh the, the police are getting com uh increasingly active sort of sending us sort of um, um summonses to appear uh to be cross-examined about it's basically all bullshit but the, the, the police in Indonesia are becoming increasingly, um, well, what did you say? Brazen in, in their corruption. That they've recently managed to um, um, neutralize the Anti Corruption Commission. Um, so I think I might have mentioned this to you before. In, or in other matters. But um, yeah, so, so now we have the police coming out with all these stupid summonses for things which don't make a lot of sense, but, but well, only makes sense if, if seen in the context of them getting money at some point. So, so yeah, it's a bit uh, tenuous at the moment. Um, I may not have a, a company or, 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 or even any money. So that could get interesting. Yeah. Well, I may need to, go to buy my buy a tent again. I was, I was just thinking that you know, uh, 
I spent a, about this seven or six years after I left school to about uh, 15, 16, um, just wandering around the country with a, with a backpack and a two man tent. And that, that's basically how I lived for, for many years uh, until you know, 23, 24, or whatever. Um, and I just think that, that that's really what I'm returning to is, you know, is, is that life. Because I, I you know, it just, um, all, all these things that I've, I've built you know, over the years, I mean, they're all very good and I like them, but uh, ultimately, you know, it only got there by, by you know, serendipity, you know, that there was no, there, I mean, there may have been certainly plans that then there were, but uh, it was not actually what I set out to do. So, so yeah, sort of, sort of at a point now where I'm sort of thinking, well, you know, if this does sort of completely crash into a, into a pile, and this, by the way, looks more like sabotage than, than, than an actual, um, um, uh, what is it, um, uh, extortion mm. on, on my computers. But there, there was sort of, you know, Bitcoin sort of uh, addresses, sort of, you know, I've got a store, you know, three Bitcoin and this account, or, or, or they won't give it back. But, you know, it, it's nonsense. I, I think the, the objective was to destroy data. So there's all these things coming out of the woodwork in Indonesia, as I suspected they would. Increasingly less control over 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 the police, um, who are basically the enemy in Indonesia. I mean, you don't need to worry about criminals; you need to worry about the police. So, so, so things get interesting over the next um, couple of weeks. But yeah, we'll see how things develop. Well, good luck. So good you luck, Gary. It's a tricky one. To... Good luck.